Hey, what's up guys? I'm Snows, your host for Boot Sequence, and I just wanted to say welcome to the 16,000 people who subscribe to the channel. That's incredible. Roll the intro. We have a photo of an NVIDIA engineering sample board and it's pretty interesting. Now just to be clear, we have no idea which GPU is supported to go on it since, well, there's no GPU on it. But it's clear that whatever it is, it has pretty interesting memory chips. If we zoom in, you can read D9WCW as an FBGA code. That's the code on the chip. Then do a little bit of Googling and it takes you to a part number on Micron's website. Click on it and voila, those chips are GDDR6 chips. So this could be the first engineering sample of the first GPU to support GDDR6. Once again, we don't know what die will be used here, but with 300,000 Pascal chips laying around in their inventory, and these are just my predictions, but I feel like we might see a rebrand a la AMD with Pascal on this generation. Of course, this is not what we want. We want brand new GPUs, but business is business, and since Nvidia is ahead, they could very well try that. What are your predictions? Rebrand or brand new? Let me know down below. Speaking of Nvidia, after their control freak GPP fiasco, it seems like they are back at it again, this time pointing the gun at journalists. Now, the German site heise.de has refused to sign a new NDA that Nvidia sent out to hardware reviewers and instead published it in full on their website. Now, I read the NDA in full, and while in the beginning I thought that it was pretty bad, I watched the game. Gamers Nexus video about it where a lawyer breaks down the legalese in the NDA. After watching the video, the NDA does seem a little less constricting, specifically the line that people were going after, which is, the recipient uses confidential information exclusively for the benefit of Nvidia. The GN interview goes pretty deep since they define confidential information and they define the meaning of benefit of Nvidia. I'll link to the video down below so you can give it a watch if you're curious it's worth it. Moving on, some more details have leaked on the Snapdragon 1000, but that's a cell phone chip, right? Wrong! This chip is built for Windows 10 laptops and is supposed to go head-to-head -head with Intel's Y and U series core processors. It seems like it is going to be a pretty fierce battle, but this battle will inevitably cause a lot of legal trouble. Now we all know how Intel has a very strong grip on the x86 architecture. The only companies currently allowed to use it are Intel, of course, AMD, and VIA, although their presence isn't really noticeable. Well, if Qualcomm were to join the race, they would have to emulate x86 since they don't have a license to use it. And Intel specifically said that they would not be afraid to take legal action if that happened. The thing is, Microsoft needs their Snapdragon partnership to make their whole continuum thing work. And I would not be surprised if Microsoft decided to still move forward specifically because they could back Qualcomm up, legally speaking. This is a very interesting story. Let me know down below what you think of it. Moving on, we've got a segment here on Boot Sequence called In Case You Didn't Know. So let's get into it. In case you didn't know, Intel's Z390 chipset is expected to be a Z370 rebrand. The only thing that sparked my interest in this story is the fact that the rumored new 8-core processor might need a little more juice and that Z390 might deliver it for overclocks. Then we have LG who is working on the V40 and apparently it wants five cameras on it. According to the Android police, the front facing cameras will be for face unlock and the rest of the cameras will be used similarly to Huawei's P20 Pro. This will be the first phone with five cameras. Sweet, I guess? Moving on to gaming, did you know that Blizzard applied for a patent for the Overwatch play of the game system? No? Well, they did, and it was granted to them. They also patented things that aren't even in the game yet, like splitting the play of the game between multiple players that made an impact. I mean, I'm not surprised. Doing this show, I've read so many dumb stuff companies did. Things like that don't even surprise me anymore. And lastly, did you know that a physical copy of Fortnite for PS4 or Xbox could cost you as much as 400 bucks? 
While the prices mostly hover around 150 to 250, these physical copies that were bundled with the consoles are already a collector's item. So if you have one, keep it sealed, cleaned, and make some green. And if you didn't know, well, now you know. And now let's answer a question from you guys. And today it is, what was the best deal on a part that you got inside of your PC? Well, the best deal was a 780 Ti I got a few years back. I went to buy this monitor from a random guy at uh, on Craigslist and he liked to play PC games and recently upgraded to a 980 because the fans on his 780 Ti stopped working. So he decided to just give it to me. He had it in a plastic bag with like all of the pieces, screws and wires just all scrambled in there, so I bought a VGA cooler for it, and it turns out the card works flawlessly. So I only spent about 40 bucks for the cooler, and I got a 780 Ti. I mean, even by today's standards, that's a pretty good deal. If you have another questions, make sure you leave it down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, and click right here to see the latest video. Just like right here, this is free content. Boom, this brings you back to the latest video, and right here to subscribe to the channel. Oh, by the way, I wanna thank you guys for the feedback back on the music. Some of you guys asked if I had a SoundCloud. Maybe one day I'll share my tracks with you. So that's pretty much it. Stay frosty and I'll see you on the next one.